There are seven deadly sins that are destroying young men. So I'm going to show you all of them and how they destroyed the reputations of some of the biggest YouTubers on this platform. Starting with number one, gluttony. Gluttony is when you overindulge in anything like food, money, or attention. For the case of the first person we're going to talk about, it was all three. Nicholas Perry, or more commonly known as Nikocado Avocado, started off as a normal kid like most of you watching. I mean, you can even see here. Dude was skinny. He was in pretty good shape. However, he then started doing mukbangs with his boyfriend because they were trending at the time, which just became this machine to get more views, more likes, and more money. How is this funny? How is this entertaining? He's not only humiliating himself, he's destroying his body. Now, I don't ever want you to end up like this in your 20s. Anytime you catch yourself overindulging in anything like food, drugs, alcohol, pornography, it's a slippery slope where you can quickly spiral downwards, borderline humiliating yourself like this guy just to get more of that fix. This takes us to number two, lust. Lust is when you have an overwhelming desire to pursue women and they can make men do dumb things like simp or chase women every weekend. This will ruin your life and it's exactly what happens in the case of this next person we'll talk about. Adam John Grand Mason, otherwise known as, you've probably seen him as Adam 22. The dude's a content creator. He became famous for hosting his podcast, No Jumper. However, over the years, it became clear to many of his viewers that he was obsessed with sex. You just feel like this is what life is about is just putting your d as many p as possible i mean it's just not it's not the end of the fucking road i'm sure you've had sex where you're like why am i here oh yeah all the time every week this is what people don't realize when you are absent of sex because you've never had sex you think it's the greatest thing in the world it's the only thing you can think of but the men that become addicted to it they realize it's not all that and not only that but they're so addicted that they can't stop even after they realize that it's not even worth all that effort. And then you start to realize there was no purpose to this other than ego. Yeah, ego. Ego or you just got some inside that's fucking broken. So you, you, whether it's the pills, whether it's drinking, whether it's women, you could fill that void with anything mm -hmm. temporarily. Yeah. But it's still going to be there. And it just deepens and becomes more clear because even those things don't become enough. This is how powerful lust is. You can see it in the video. They know it's not good for them but they can't control themselves and continue to pursue it. Now, according to an article published in Harvard, this happens to most men, usually because you have an overwhelming production of testosterone and low levels of self-control. This is why most men can relate to this and why most men need to fight against this lust because for Adam, it all caught up to him last year, July, 2023. He did the unthinkable by recording and releasing a video of another man sleeping with his wife for a little bit of clout and money. Yo, I have my own wife. There is nothing under the sun that you could offer me that would motivate me to even think this is a possibility. But when you're so depraved with lust and you're looking for that next high, anything becomes available. You know, if it makes me a cuck that I enjoyed watching my wife get by another guy, then so be it, I'm a cuck. And like, sure enough, I had like 10,000 quote tweets that were like, yes, you are a cuck. And like, which doesn't really, it just doesn't really hit with me. That's the thing, bro. Like w when you let lust control you, you need that next fix. And like you saw, it's not enough to, to be inside of another girl's vagina. It's not, it's not enough. They need a fix. So what do they do? He needs to watch another man do it just to turn himself on. That's crazy. Your job as a man is to protect your wife. He instead decided to expose her. And this led to his automatic downfall, where he was on top of the world with his podcast, getting millions of views. And all of a sudden, his reputation is tarnished. No man respects him. And you can see the downfall of his reach because people don't connect with him anymore. And that still didn't stop him from doubling down on lust. So I do want to extend an invite that if you were ever interested in doing your first ever double penetration scene, that me and Lena, I, I mean, I, I don't want to speak for you, but I feel like, yo, dude, would he be a suitable candidate? Would you, <laughs> yo! Can I tap him in? I don't know. Imagine offering your wife, your sister, your mother to another man as if it's like a big joke. Even Andrew Tate, who everybody thinks is a misogynist, wasn't interested in Adam's lustful behavior. And you can see some of the comments. You can see what people are saying. Like this one, that's what a defeated man looks like. So if you're in your 20s and you think, oh, that'll never be me, it could easily be you. Because if you're just making girls your priority, if you can't control yourself and you're watching porn five times a day, you'll notice that your own taste will become depraved. You'll start with normal stuff. And then even your porn addiction will become more and more twisted. You need to control your lust. I'm not saying girls aren't important. You need to be dating. You need to find a good girl. 
keep lust under control. Right now, you should be focused on building yourself and those around you, which is not true for the next person we're talking about, which is the third sin, envy. You see, envy is when you feel jealousy or anger towards someone because they have something that you want. In the case for Logan Paul, it was his own brother's boxing ability. I think I'm better than you. And I think Nate chose you for a reason. I worked with my brother for 10 years. Never once have I humiliated or him humiliated me in public like that. Like to, to try to put your own brother down and say you're better than them at something. Like, yeah, you can have friendly competition amongst each other, but in public, as brothers, as blood, you should be a unified front. Even what do you mean? In, even in even in here. But what have you done to prove that you're better than me? Well, I don't know. Went toe to toe eight rounds with the greatest boxer of all time. Bro, he got his ass whooped by that guy. That, that weighed half his weight. I'm telling you right now, weight class matters. I'm doing jujitsu right now. I weigh about 200 pounds. When I roll with purple belts that weigh 120 pounds, even though they have years of experience, my weight matters. Like I can use my weight to defend myself. So for this guy to use that as an excuse, like, yo, dude's massive compared to Mayweather. But you can see Logan's envy of Jake's success as a boxer just by him talking by his body language. He doesn't want to admit that his own little brother is better than him at something. Now, I do want to give you some advice here. I did find research where it showed low amounts of envy can be beneficial to your own success as it can be used as a strong motivator. The problem is that if you take it too far, it can be extremely destructive to one's relationships and reputation. Something that's very clear for the case of Logan Paul. Just look at the comments of any of his posts. For example, for once I'm with Jake, he's the better fighter. Logan is delusional. You'll see this across all social media. So if you are in your 20s and you see someone around you doing well, don't be envious. Instead, you congratulate them for their success and use that as your motivating fuel so you can reach your own. For example, take a look at George Jenko. Most people are envious of Logan Paul and stay around him just for his success, like his friend Mike. He's always around him trying to get some of his own success. But George, George wasn't envious. Instead, he set out to become his own independent creator. And go look at his own podcast that he hosts by himself. It's his own show. It's doing better numbers now than the podcast that he was on with Logan. So, you as men need to be more like George and less like Mike. This is exactly why I created the Content Academy. In it, I personally help guys like you learn how to become creators with zero following and build a business around it just like I did. And right now, we're opening spots because I'm looking to mentor more men just like you. These guys are closing $1,000 deals every month. Some of these guys are making an extra 20, 30, 40 K a year, and they just started two months ago. So if you think you got what it takes, if you think you're that guy that can build instead of being envious, I want you to book a call with my team. They're going to see if you're that good fit because I only want guys that are actually going to put in the work. And if you are, you can buy in into this private community. Well, I will train you to be a successful creator. Takes us to sin number four, sloth. Sloth is when you become lazy and unwilling to do something when you are perfectly capable of doing more. And Ethan Klein is a perfect example of how being a sloth can destroy your life. You see, Ethan, back in the day, I used to watch him. He started out a great content creator with a lot of enthusiasm. He was creating content with creators like iDubbbz and PewDiePie. 2017, wanna be edgy PewDiePie? I don't, you tell me. I, I come, which package did you order? I was kind of hoping you'd just be yourself. This is YouTube OG right here. Do not ask me to like your video before it starts or I will f straight up YouTube hero the FBI to your house on child porn charges. This was peak, peak YouTube here, like where you were actually putting effort. But over time, he started to become slothful. He took time off creating content and then came back with a podcast where instead of creating content, he would just sit back and criticize other people's content. Shirt on? You By the way, he yeah, starts filming on. now, but or it starts now. I'm pretty sure they've been arguing for a while based on how that started. He's like, you got to get in or out, bro. Like, I make, you know, $12 an hour. I'm not trying to fucking deal with your ass. Hey, what's going on, man? Heard y'all have vapes here. Like, he's criticizing another creator for something he would do frequently, and it was a lighthearted joke. It was cool because you used to make stuff, and now you just critique stuff, and there's a big difference between people like me and people like you. Damn, like, the dude couldn't have said it any better, right? Like, when you go from making stuff to critiquing stuff, that's just you going downwards. You're taking the lazy route. You're taking the path of least resistance, and that is slothful. Now, most people become slothful because they follow the same path Ethan did. You start consuming more content than creating content, which is why you as a man, every day, you should try to create something. This will prevent you from being slothful, but also could propel you into a different career. I'll give you an example. Seven of the guys that signed up to my content academy less than three months ago, 
are already closing 10, 15, 20 different deals with 20 brands. These deals range from a couple hundred dollars to multiple thousands of dollars, all in their first couple of months with no followers. You wanna know why? Because they decided to take action and start creating rather than just consuming. In fact, some of the guys in my community have done it so well that I've already hired five of them to work with my team personally. You see, inside the Content Academy, you're gonna get access to my personal WhatsApp number, as well as my team's number, head writers, head editors, people that I pay 100, 200,000 a year in salary, you're gonna get access to them so you can get advice from them as well. But like I mentioned earlier, this is not for everyone. I also don't wanna overwhelm my plate or the time that my team has to help everyone because I want everyone to be successful. So we're only opening 10 slots into this community. And if you guys wanna see if you can be approved, I'm gonna have a link down below where you can book a call with my team. Number five, pride. This creator is a creator that a lot of people have encountered, David Dobrik, and he fell to the sin of pride. You see, David Dobrik became famous for creating highly entertaining, four minute vlogs where, where he would encourage his friends to party more or do crazy things. Now, because of those crazy moments, crazy environments David would create, many argue that he was responsible for his best friend's involvement, which his name was Dom, in a sexual harassment scandal. Now, this led to David creating his own apology video where what he did was deflected instead of accepting responsibility. The other people that I no longer film with, I, I chose to distance myself because I don't align with some of the actions and I don't I don't stand for any kind of misconduct and I I'm I was just I've been really disappointed by some of my friends. You see, David had too much pride to realize he was wrong. And so his video had so much backlash, he had to turn comments off. You know when they turn comments off, it's a bloodbath in the comments. And it also significantly affected his reputation. Now let's contrast that with Andrew Tate, who also has a significant amount of pride but he doesn't let it get the best of him. And because of that, it doesn't tarnish his image. If you choose pride over happiness, you're gonna make decisions that you're proud of and the people around you are proud of, and it's gonna be better, better for yourself and better for society and better for everyone who loves you, everyone you care about. I if think you that's the first thing you said that I disagree with. You disagree? Completely. I think the best thing a man can do is wake up and say, what can I do that's gonna make me proud of myself and other people are proud of me? As you just saw, he uses the pride that he has for himself as a motivator to continuously improve on himself and take care of his family. Why? Because he has too much pride in himself to allow himself to just become a pawn in the game of life. Man, what is this? Pawn. Pawn. This is what most people in life are. Pawns. This is called a knight. Yeah, a knight. A knight, like a horse, you see? Yeah, yeah, I do. Man, that's dope, man. I'm telling you, as a father, I'm a daughter. You have these interactions all the time where it's like you're playing with them, but there's these little learning lessons where you're crafting her mind to ensure that they also end up surpassing you. So this is dope to see because you can see that he truly is working towards taking care and protecting of his family. So if you're in your 20s, don't be afraid to admit when you're wrong to prevent you being prideful. But on the flip side, I don't want you to abandon pride entirely and just become a pawn in the game of life. Number six. Wrath. Wrath is an uncontrollable anger, a sin that is often unseen until it's like way too late, which is the reality for the wife of the next person I'm going to talk about, Steven Crowder. He would become famous because he would go to college campuses and, you know, talk about controversial topics. Someone in a privilege of power, let's say a cop or an attorney or whatever, they ask the question, well, what were you wearing that night that mm. permeates? Which is bullshit. It is, it is bullshit. Sorry. Yeah. And you Sorry. think rape culture is a fucking man? This was like peak YouTube at the time, bro. I would, I would binge watch Steve. This is better than reality TV. I don't know if this guy set it up. Great stuff. And this, you know, this stuff would lead to stuff like this. Red. Nope. Or even stuff like this as well. If we're guilty until proven innocent, yes, we'd be rotting in a jail, but... I, I know of, what did I hear? I know of a story just recently. And if you tell, look at his body language, he would always keep this calm persona, which made the content even better. But despite of the calm persona that you would see on videos, reports of his anger started to surface. And then a video of him angry at his wife became public and it went hyper viral. I love you very much. I don't love you, that's the big problem. I've never received love from you, and the fact is, when I go, look, I need you to do A, B, C, and D, you just be disciplined about it, you go, no. But I love you more than life itself. Okay. Put on some gloves. No. But I love you more than life itself. That's not fair. That's not fair, and it's disingenuous. Hillary, you're right, right in the past. Become someone, let's see me, day in and day out, worthy of 
a wife? Word? No, not as a wife. I didn't say as a wife. Hillary, Hillary, come on now. I'm not going to engage. That's, that's always a tough watch when you see it. But if you are also a man in your 20s, I need you to stop getting angry because that's just being emotional. Most men don't realize that anger is just another emotion and you being angry all the time. It's no different than you crying all the time, being sad all the time. You cannot be an emotional man. This includes crying or complaining about where you are in life or having a victim mentality because things aren't going your way. This takes us to the last deadly sin, which is greed. Greed is that desire for money and material possession. This will lead you down a path of deception and betrayal just like it did for Dylan Dennis. You see, before 2023, Dylan Dennis was known for his success in martial arts, especially Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. However, as soon as he started getting a little bit of popularity as a creator, he just let greed get the best of him. Rather than providing his audience with true value or entertainment, which is what the reason they were following them, he participated in 20 different pump and dump meme coin schemes. Rectifying my situation actively. You scammed yeah. your f***ing audience on 20 separate occasions. 20 Commu separate occasions. Community notes, check your ass, bro. Okay, yeah. Quote, unquote, Dylan Dennis has also scammed his audience on several occasions. You, I reassure you every single time I tweet. That's embarrassing, bro. Imagine community notes on x.com telling you you're a scammer. Like, that's going to follow you for the rest of your life, bro. Yo, you don't read contracts, huh? No. No, that's I get people you, to do that for me, yeah, buddy. You Not like you. Scamming. Where were those people when you got caught for scamming? I didn't scam nobody. Oh, yeah, yeah, you literally yeah, signed yeah, a contract yeah. that said, I am agreeing to scamming my audience. You pay your fans back. Scamming you pay your fans. Bro, this guy is so slow. And it was for a couple grand, too. He was so full of greed. He signed a contract where it literally stated, I'm going to scam my audience with this coin. That's insane and you can see that when he's confronted with these scams he just deflects now the problem with greed is that it never stops you always need more and now when you mess your reputation you will forever be known as an untrustworthy scammer no one's going to want to work with you similar to envy greed is needed for success you just can't allow it to control you as a matter of fact a little bit of greed is a good thing as it can drive ambition for you to pursue more in your life this is exactly what happened to one of the guys that joined my content academy. So I've been part of the school for, I want to say maybe three, three or four months. Like I've been making content for maybe five or six years and I never really made like a lot of money. I never actually worked with brands uh, until I joined the school and I really learned how to maneuver more as a business than a content creator and learn how to sell myself to other brands. I've landed about 12 to 15 deals since joining the school. And just last week I landed my first four figure deal, which is amazing. After joining the school, learning from Jose, learning from the entire community, it's been amazing. If you really wanna make money in this space, the fastest way possible, this is probably your best bet. You can see a little bit of greed is natural. In fact, it's fuel for ambition. You need to take the route of providing value. This is something I explain deeply in my content academy, as that is where that shift happened, where you can be greedy. But as long as you provide value, now you're no longer considered greedy. Now you're just ambitious. So there you have it. The seven deadly sins you need to watch out for and stop indulging in your 20s so you don't ruin your life.